All right, welcome to the Defects and Rejects Radio Podcast, Episode 2. My name is Jesse, coming to you from Pueblo, Colorado. Today we have a special guest curator, our friend uh, Mr. John Bueno. Hi, how's it going? Comic slash musician slash journalist <laughs> slash vinyl guy slash coffee guy slash <laughs> shit, man. Who what, says, like, who says what, what uh, there, there's no such thing as a renaissance man these days? Yeah, you there, know? there you go. With the internet, I guess we all kind of can be, you know. You have to be. There's no way to make money. <laughs> yeah, right. So what's kind of cool is, is uh, th- what we're doing today is John brought a couple of bands with him t- t- that uh, I have not heard yet to uh, play on the show. And then we've got a couple other cool bands. That first band was uh, Hard Attack Kids with their song Deaf Dogs. They've got an album on Bandcamp called No Future. They're based out of London, Ontario. Another really aggressive, powerful two-piece. There's a lot of really killer two-pieces I've been coming across lately. So what's new, man? Like, what's what's comedy like? Comedy is interesting. Uh, I, I I love it. Uh, I played in a band for a lot of years, as you know. And uh, when I decided to start doing comedy, I was like, oh, it's, it's you know, I'm going to miss playing in a band. And then once you start doing it a lot, it's kind of like being in a band still. <laughs> Like you, you have to show up before anyone else is at the, sh- you know, at the place. Uh, you got to talk to the promoter, and then you just kind of sit for a while, and then you do your thing, and then you get paid at the end of the night, and then people are drinking. It's it's basically the same thing. If same I'm kind honest. of thing, except I, you don't have the you don't have the other musicians to kind of hide behind. You exa- don't have the you don't have the shield. Also, if I make any money, I get to keep it though. Oh <laughs> so yeah, that's that's, good. that's cool. That's cool. Do you like? Do comics ever do, like, merch or anything like that? Or? Yeah, some of them do. Uh, there's, like, a couple of different, like, schools of thought. Like, Road Doggy Comics will do, like, kind of these bad hack, like, they all have, like, a slogan and they, like, put it on t-shirts and shit oh, like yeah. that. Oh, yeah, I, um, are you familiar with Dean Del Rey? Yes. I, I really like his podcast. Um, okay. I listen to him a lot, and yeah. I haven't seen a lot of his stand-up, but uh, he was just talking the other day about he's got one of those kind of things like him and jay moore have jay moore has the warriors yo oh, yeah yeah sure you know like the warriors logo and then uh dean del rey's fans are the del razors <laughs> <laughs> see that stuff's cool so, though but like the some of the ones i've seen have been like like literally they have like a, a weird catchphrase and they just it's like get or done except for people who don't aren't successful enough to use get or done yeah uh but there's also really cool people who do stuff just like um they do like download cards and stuff like that, or they do pins, stickers, stuff like that. Amy Miller, who is a really fucking fantastic comic, uh, she she's actually signed to Kill Rock Stars, which is really cool. And she put out oh. yeah, she put out uh, an album maybe a few months ago, and it's on vinyl, and it's fucking great. Have you ever thought about doing that? Like like a comedy album, or like like even like a short one, or taping a show, or yeah. Something like that? So what I've always wanted to do is almost do like maybe like a split seven inch, or like or like a split with a bunch of other comics. And I, I'm sure it's been done probably, but like I would love to like because then you don't have to do like forty five. Like like I couldn't do set it up. I'll, I'll record it. I've cool. got all the stuff. Like I'll record it. Get the other comics on board. We'll set up mics. We'll run them through. And That'd be fun. We'll tape man. the whole thing and master it and. That would be fun. And send it off or do whatever. Shit. Did you know Third Man like has opened their new pressing plant to the yeah. public? No shit. Yeah. You can you can press whatever you want through that. They do short runs, seven inches, twelve inches. Cool. It's not very much more expensive. It's about the same pricing as United. You know? Yes. Yeah. I mean vinyl's really cheap. It's just a lot at first. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it comes to like a dollar seventy a copy. That's for a seven inch for like a full length for a 12, or for a 12 inch oh shit but you got to buy like 500 copies yeah exactly so after pressing fees and all that you're, you're sitting at about 15 1600 bucks right but then you've got 500 copies and an incredible profit margin absolutely but they come stamped you know pressed at third man oh like, yeah that's 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 that's, that's cool that's kind of cool you know who's on third man i did a i did a show with a comic named rory scoville yeah, I just watched his special on uh, Dude, Netflix. He's 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 one of the best working comics today. He's really? amazing, and he did an album on Third Man. Yeah, the um they've been doing a lot of stand up on Third Man. Yeah. Oh no. Sh- yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. In uh, that live room. They uh, have Billy Wayne Davis. I think has a record on. Yeah. yeah and he's super funny and then, too. Didn't Conan do one too? But or was his was he might have done music though. He maybe yeah. I know he recorded some too, but I think that's I think that's cool, man. I think um that's one of the great things about vinyl is uh. 
I hope this sticks around. You know, I kind of hope the resurgence sticks around. I mean, it's, I think it will. Um, I mean, it's always been there. Yeah. But it is kind of cool that it's more supported now. So you find a lot yeah, more cool stuff. Absolutely. Now there's more plants popping up. So hopefully pressing will get cheaper. And oh, yeah. I I, uh, I mean, that meat records out of Denver, I think they hand cut. Oh, wow. Those They hand cut sevens and I think 12 inches. That's like my ultimate goal, man. Like I haven't. Um, I've put out stuff on just about every media but vinyl. It's, and I, I really want to do that. It just seems, it just feels like you've accomplished something. I would think absolutely. it just feels legit. Like it's like, it's real. It's here. It's like just right outside of like the, the cost range for a lot of people. You know yeah. I mean? It really is. And, I wish, you know, a lot of bands are so scared of crowdfunding. Like there's such a stigma with it. Yeah. People are like, how dare you ask for money? And I'm like, if people like it, man, they, you know, I want to help out the bands I like. Sure. Absolutely. You know? If, Absolutely. if one of the bands I like comes up and like, hey, we want to put out a double 180 special edition in like a box and it's sure. like super cool. I'm like, yeah, man, take my money. See, but I think peop- the only thing people don't like is bands that like are, maybe aren't putting in a lot of work wanting to like. I get that. You know what I mean? Like, I don't yeah. want I don't want to crowdfund somebody's tour, really. Yeah, I could see that. And I get that they're expensive. You know what I mean? Cause yeah. If you go on tour, you know it fucking, it's. So it's I can a see crowdfunding drenner. an album, crowdfunding yeah. a record, but crowdfunding a turd, uh, the t- a tur, tur, yeah. Crowdfunding a turd. Yeah. Crowdfunding a turd. That's, uh, there you go. <laughs> There's the name of your, your, uh, stand-up EP, seven inch. <laughs> now I have to get it crowdfunded. Right. There you go. <laughs> We've got this plan, man. We're going to record it. We're going to crowdfund the shit out of it. And that would be fun. We're well, going to, you know, that'd be awesome. <laughs> So uh, this next band we're going to play is uh, some friends of mine from Mexico City. They're actually right in the middle of this, uh, you know, earthquake catastrophe. I talked to him the other day. He said that a lot of the house in his, houses in his neighborhood, the roofs are caved in, and they were luckily untouched. But he's got a PayPal set up to try to do some relief in his neighborhood. And uh, I'm going to have a link to that in the description. It'll be on the plastered all over the website, Facebook, YouTube. So uh, definitely look for that link. Even a, just a couple bucks would help out down there significantly. This is Hoffin with Nowhere Boy. Yeah, so 
That was Hoffin with Nowhere Boy. Once again, there's a link in the description on this to donate money to those guys. They're in the middle of the uh, destruction zone of the earthquakes in Mexico City right now. And they're just trying to get a little bit of relief just for their neighborhood. So please, two bucks, five bucks, ten bucks, whatever you can do. Um, on a brighter note, John brought a couple of bands with him. Yeah. That we're going to check out in a minute. Absolutely. But uh, first off, I want to—I I know I asked you a little bit about this the other day, but you just came back from Chicago. Yeah. Riot Fest. Yes. Went to two days? I went to two days, yeah. Two days? Two of three. So overall, because so you've been to the Denver Riot Fest, mm-hmm. what do you think? I, I know it's going to be way bigger, but... Like a comparison? Yeah. Uh, I mean, to be honest, it was pretty pretty similar if yeah. i'm being you know it was just at a giant park and everybody was being chill and nice and having a good time and there was beer flowing everywhere it's not the <laughs> typical i i feel like the riot fest down here we're not your typical uh festival atmosphere totally uh i will say like sh- since chicago has been doing it a lot longer i think that they have a good sense of like they're just there to fucking party man like denver's a little uptight sometimes you know yeah uh in chicago not so much at all everybody was fucking pumped and just ready it, it didn't i mean i didn't w- watch nearly as many bands as i thought i was going to because that's you know that's the way it happens sometimes but uh every band i did see people were just going off and having a good time so was there an instance of two bands that you really wanted to see that were playing at the exact same time that you could not yes pull off yes uh it was the last night uh it was jawbreaker night and so at the main stage, they had uh, <clears throat> the last three bands of the night on the main stage were Cap and Jazz, Dinosaur Jr., and then uh, Jawbreaker. And me and my wife kind of stood back and were hanging out for Cap and Jazz, uh, basically because we knew we wanted to get a good spot for Jawbreaker. So we were just at the, we, at the end of the day, we were at the same stage for about six hours. Uh, <laughs> I did that for Trio and AFI at the first Riot Fest yeah, in Byers. Totally. Uh, and, um, so we sit, we watch Cap and Jazz are having a good time. We end up seeing a really good spot off on a rail. Like, okay, let's go grab that spot. And then we're watching Dinosaur Jr. And then it dawned on me, oh fuck, Best Coast is playing around the corner. And I love Best Coast, man. Really? I love lo-fi. I, I saw them live, but I, I never really gave them a chance. Oh yeah. So they, their, their first two records, especially are fantastic. It's just like this lo-fi stoner surf pop stuff. Nice. Oh, it's so Let's good. Check that out. Um, but I was like, you know what? I've seen him before. It's just not going to happen this time. And then b- by the end of Dinosaur Jr., set, I looked behind me, and like, there was no going anywhere. People were just crowding in because Jawbreaker was, you know, imminent. Yeah, that's <laughs> nuts. Like that's how it felt for replacements in Denver too. Yeah, it was. Uh, totally. Um, I didn't get a very. What was cool about that first one in Byers was that main stage. There was kind of a the grass kind of went up in a hill. Yeah. So I was by myself and. I found an awesome spot up in the grass, like up on the hill, and just could see over the crowd to the, oh, for nice. the replacement. So yeah. just sit up there and hang out, and that was really cool. But uh, the worst place they did one here was that Western National Complex. I think that's where they do it now. Like They've done oh, it the past couple of years. Terrible. Right? It was just a dirt ball. I felt so bad. We were watching the Pixies, mm-hmm. and the wind was blowing at the Pixies. <laughs> and so they were just getting pelted with rocks and dirt getting kicked up by the audience especially like when they they like when in like crackety jones and like some really some other more aggressive stuff yeah and so little pits were breaking out and they were just getting blasted with dirt and rocks (laughs) the entire show 
and they've all got like beautiful guitars and beautiful right. equipment and sure. i'm like oh that sucks so, bad. <laughs> so how was jawbreaker like like <sighs> i've me and you have both Dude. talked to jawbreaker probably since the day we've met so uh, it was the culmination of just some i mean that, that's the what's what riot fest is so good at is that they're, they're amazing at bringing bands to you that you never thought you would get the chance. You know what I mean? Like, I didn't become a Jawbreaker fan until I was in high school, which is 2001 or something like that. They were already well broken up by that point. And it was just like, well, I'll never get to experience it, and that's fine. I'll just have these records to enjoy. Um, and then the same with the replacements. I didn't... I didn't. The, that very first Denver Riot Fest, they brought the fucking replacements. Right? The fucking See, replacements. And And... and I'm not going to, you know, I don't know if I love one more than the other or anything, but like, it's just fucking well, cool, Well, they reunited man. Danzig and Jerry only. Yeah, totally. Like, how? That's That's totally. been one of the gnarliest feuds in music. <laughs> like, I, I missed it. Damn yeah. it. I heard it looked really good, too. <laughs> yeah, I, I didn't go I, to that one. I heard either. it was actually pretty good. I heard they, they were solid. Yeah. Uh, I saw Danzig this year. At, at, in Chicago, and he didn't sound great, yeah. but that's fine. That's whatever. Hey, he's his, doing his, it. Though, his backing man. band is rad. How I look at it is, uh, even if they don't sound the best, they're still doing it. Yeah, they're totally. still out there. I mean, totally. Danzig's getting up there. Yeah. He's just a little creep, and he's just <laughs> up there killing it. <laughs> still, man, like his voice is shot. Like he's got no yeah. no voice left. Mm-hmm. But uh, and then one that I think is surely underrated that. Riot Fest brought at least to Denver first was failure when they got back oh, together. Yeah, I forgot and about so that. And so that was kind of like Jawbreaker for me. That was the band that I grew up on sure. and have just worshipped those, you know, three albums: Comfort and Magnified and Fantastic Planet. Have just been religion to me for sure. years. Absolutely, I never thought I'd ever get to see them, and they brought them on the second Riot Fest, mm-hmm. and um, no one really knew who they were and yeah, i was they're... so sad because the only reason uh, so many people were up in the front row because they played right before they played on the same stage as primus i think it went failure gogo bordello and then primus okay i think was that stage and there were all these people because a perfect circle covered um the nurse who loved me by failure okay years ago sure and so all these people only knew Failure by a perfect circle. Okay. And it was also the Primus stage. Sure. So you had all these Tool fans that spent the entire set yelling at Failure to play that one song really? they made her cover. It was so annoying. Yeah. And I'm just like, this is the greatest moment ever. And I've got this douche next to me like, perfect circle. He didn't even know the name of the song. <laughs> he just yelled at perfect just circle. like, perfect circle. I'm like, <laughs> God, man. If I wasn't so excited, you'd be punched. <laughs> uh long story short though um jawbreaker was fucking amazing uh they, they sounded great uh i was a little worried about blake's voice and stuff like that i w- i was worried because i watched this video online of him playing like an acoustic show from maybe like a few years ago he, he, he just sounded he, tired yeah and, and, but like he'd also look like he gained a little bit of weight it looks like he lost a little bit of weight mm-hmm. in the in that interim or whatever uh, but dude, they were they fucking thundered. But man. you'd you'd have to be making a huge mistake if you didn't take something like that seriously, knowing how um, fanatic that fan base totally. is. Totally, absolutely. You know, it's well, a bad example, but an example of that is Axl Rose has sounded like total dog shit for right. the last 50, 10, 15 years. <laughs> yeah, and then he gets back with Slash and Duff, and he drops a crap ton of weight, and he's vocally on point oh really he's really on good. point they actually sound really good my my dad is a monster guns and roses fan so yeah. he got me into them really young and, and they're kind of like that that band that i i do still really love dude i like but, guns yeah guns you know, and roses is rad you know yeah what I mean? they're just they're just decadence man and I'm, I'm about it with them right on <laughs> tell me tell me about this first band you brought uh so the first band that i want to talk about is they uh their name is panther martin and they are from, I believe, Fort Collins. Uh, Fort Collins, I'm continually jealous of as a scene. They have a shit ton of super, super interesting bands going on. It's not just like we have a punk scene and we have a hardcore bands. Like they are like on this cool, weird, lo-fi, indie fuzz garage tip lately, and like everything, almost everything I hear out of that 
scene is fucking phenomenal and it sounds cool and it's different and you know i don't know i, I think they're great so it's panther martin <laughs> that was panther martin out of fort collins we think pretty sure pretty sure all right with everybody all at once comma everything so we're here with uh john bueno what do you got coming up uh me personally i uh i i have a show at the rainbow bar in pueblo colorado the the esteemed rainbow bar uh and i'm bringing back the helotite comedy night oh nice which is just me and a bunch of dipshit friends hanging out telling jokes uh, it was a monthly show here in Pueblo for quite a while, and then the bar I was booking at shut down. Uh, so I'm excited to bring it back to the Rainbow. We loved the Rainbow. We used to run an open mic yeah. uh, out of the Rainbow, and it was kind of horrifying sometimes, but it was cool. Dude, the Rainbow kind of saved the day here. Dude, it, yeah, it fucking did for sure. Uh, it, it was really rough for a while. It seemed like there was no ba- nowhere for bands to play. And now we've got the hanging tree. The grind, yeah, you know, tree, mm-hmm. all ages. Finally, something to do somewhere to do all ages. Totally, yeah, and yeah. There between those two, I think we're gonna be all right. Hopefully, you know what I mean for the time being. But we'll see what happens. I like the rainbow though, cause I, I love like these nice kind of anything goes 
divey places to play in. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's it's a cool place because like, so last Friday everyone kind of came together and did the vinyl night. Dude, it was is, so fun. It was fun. I'm like really hoping we do more of those. I think we've already scheduled the next one. Next really? next next vinyl night. Everybody's the third. The third Friday in uh, October. I think it's the 20th or the 22nd. Nice. Something like that. It's already pre-scheduled, so. I don't think a month is enough time for me to, you know, anally put myself set together, <laughs> you know? Like, I'll, I'll totally be set on one. Yeah. And I'll, like, way overthink it. <laughs> I, I, I didn't even get the chance to think about it until that day. I was like, oh, fuck, I'm doing a thing tonight. I should go look at my records. Yeah, right. So, but it came out all right. I was, you know, was was chill. Like, I was late for work that morning almost because i was like going through my shit like <laughs> like, like what's gonna be the perfect opener sure. like, what oh, am yeah. i gonna put on and just like go off on <laughs> can't go wrong with butthole surfers so no hell no thought that was a good good kickoff but yeah that was that was great man like it was just cool to see people come out even by themselves with just a backpack full of stuff and, totally you know just kind of hang out and listen to stuff because it's like They'd sit in the corner. There were a couple guys just kind of sat there and like didn't really talk to anybody. They got up there, they played their set, and then they were like a different person the rest of the night. They had something to talk about. They sure. had a conversation starter with people. And, Absolutely. And it seemed like after everyone did their sets, uh, everyone just started really having fun and everyone hung out late. And there was such an eclectic mix of stuff. And yeah, I, yeah, I, I thought it was going to be like all droney fucking bleak metal you know what i mean yeah, i thought it was gonna be like all black metal yeah and like, totally and it totally wasn't i was it amazed wasn't at all like when when your fucking grindcore extraordinaire sound man mike sword just starts putting on michael jackson oh and, and he opened his set with sesame street fever mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah it was it was all over the board i was expecting him to it'd be the one to break out the the <laughs> gnarliest shit in the world and he gets up there and you know you know how mike looks man. oh yeah and uh he just rolls up there and you hear Sesame Street Fever kick on <laughs> and you're just like, all right, it's going to be a good night. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It was cool. A lot of different styles on display. Yeah. Next time, I think I'm going to do an all uh, jazz or hip hop set. Oh, nice. Right on. Be interesting. Yeah. I have no idea yet. I'm going to way overthink it. <laughs> 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 so it's fun, dude. It's like, I mean, it's what, it's what I do at home anyway. Right. Absolutely. You know, and uh, I know the girlfriend has got to get sick of me being like, you have to sit down and read this lyric sheet like holding her hostage <laughs> like here i know you've read it like three times but you you really need to you know play this you know killing joke record all the way through and just read all the <laughs> lyrics like like my wife would just tell me no <laughs> yeah well my girlfriend's too nice and, and she'll, yeah. she'll take the she'll take the audible abuse <laughs> you know like she claims that she's she's into it but kind of feel bad she comes That's home fine. from work she's worked like 12 hours and i'm like here sit down on the couch here's a cup of tea now read this lyric yeah sheet. No, <laughs> fucking rage you gotta understand <laughs> you gotta understand <laughs> you gotta understand this record to understand me <laughs> i wish Just i get all fuck i'll get all neurotic and crazy on it. i wish i could feel like that anymore really yeah i don't feel like that <laughs> really Man, all of it no music. dude it's it's like uh god man it's uh with without it it's just like feels like strangulation man right i can't handle i can't handle the work week the everyday world without it i feel that you know yeah and i I guess i'm like that musically but as far as like uh i don't know maybe like wanting people to understand like how i feel about a band i have a hard time with that i guess really now it's more just like i'm gonna give this to you and if you like it that's fine and if not that's cool too well that's cool yeah i dig that i'm i'm 30 now so yeah you know it's an old bastard a lot of wisdom so old but 30s the you know (laughs) 30s the new 20 and 40s the new 30 that's right 18s the new 52 <laughs> i guess Com- you know according to facebook you know millennials yeah you know all it's every everybody who is not you know in their 40s is lumped into that category right it's yeah pretty funny it's really broad yeah yeah it's so- kind of like it's kind of like the, the the term hipster yeah totally you know totally like i'm starting to like i a couple years ago i was like damn hipsters hipsters ruin everything and now i'm sitting here like because i'm turning 27 this year Mm -hmm. so a little younger and i'm sitting here going okay well i've got a pretty beast record collection i've got a black denim jacket Mm -hmm. i drink a lot of coffee Mm -hmm. now i've got a podcast black glasses i see now now (laughs) this is going to be the hipster thing to say 
well, no, I'm not even gonna say it because it's gonna be worse. But I've been wearing black glasses like since I was like yeah, in like seventh grade. Oh yeah, we all have. You know, it's, yeah, so, uh, we've all had bad vision for a long yeah. time. <laughs> we were all into that band before it was cool. Yeah, exactly. You know, to be into that band, we've all been and, Weezer uh, fans for a long time. Yeah. It's fine, dude. I almost they had a copy of the Blue album on vinyl at Independent yesterday. And I almost got it because mm-hmm. I don't have it. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't claim to be a huge Weezer fan. But, I uh, I do that first that first record. I have a shit. I have a shitty Weezer tattoo. Yeah. Do you really? Well, it's not shitty, but yeah, it's it's uh, I'll show you. It's good. This is gonna sound really good on a podcast, by the way. Yeah. Just, yeah, that's just yeah. just just describe it to him. Yeah, so uh, the, the zipper noise, and yep. uh, you know, a lot of squeaking, and oh, oh wow, wow. <laughs> so so uh, that's that's impressive, John. Thank you. It's, it's awesome. It's very impressive. It's a uh, you, can, uh, you can put that away now. It's the Weezer logo <laughs> inside of a heart, uh, with three dots next to it. Yeah, which is the kind of tattoo you get with friends. After everybody's been drinking, yeah, we'll we'll leave the location to your imagination. Oh yeah, it's a it's a dirty <laughs> one. Yeah, I I've got my my life of agony, sure, and then my terribly uh, kitchen seventeen year old kitchen sing the sorrow mm-hmm. AFI leaves. That's what I thought it was, and then uh, that's that's about it for band tattoos at the moment. I have uh, a few. I've got a few planned. I have a few. I think I have a minor threat tattoo. I have like you know some lyrics on me. I have a Smith's tattoo now. Oh yeah. Nice. Yeah. That's like the only things I, I can think of to tattoo, really. Yeah. You know, I just don't spend the money on tattoos like I'd like to. Sure. Because it's always going into whatever. But yeah, you know, it's uh, pushing 30 and you're sitting around going, man, damn, we're, we're kind of hipsters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You, <laughs> yeah. It's just absolutely. like, like, it's just, it's, it just kind of happened. Absolutely. <laughs> well, in some days you were talking about millennials, like some days I feel like a millennial sometimes and some days I'm don't at all you know what i mean yeah some days i'm like i don't get these fucking kids man no and then, and then i say shit like oh i'm gonna be on a podcast tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> but well yeah but are there a lot of kids doing podcasts i have no idea i did hear that uh at the college here they are now teaching podcasting classes they did that at comic-con they yeah, had um it's insane podcasting panels yeah yeah but, uh, you know, the, the kind of the purpose behind this show was, so I know when, when I was a kid, didn't have internet yep. yet, mm-hmm. really. And so where did you discover music? Your your parents? Yep. You weren't really discovering, especially if you're a kid that listens to, you know, I was a big Nirvana fan when I was a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, I listened to it, like, that's why I have this Life of Agony tattoo, I my dad brought home that record when I was like three years old and I played it religiously all growing up. So it's kind of hard to talk to other five-year-olds about, you know, life of agony. Yeah, totally. You know, that, that, that doesn't really, totally. doesn't really work. So you got all your music off the radio, probably had a cassette player. I know I had a cassette player. Oh, yeah. You tape over the holes, you throw it in the thing and you hit, you wait for them to announce the song and then you get Absolutely. so mad when the dj won't shut up and he cuts off the first 30 seconds of your song and so now every time <laughs> you want to play that damn song you got to listen to that dumbass mm-hmm. with his radio voice and then hopefully maybe next time he'll shut up first and you'll actually get a <laughs> decent recording of it but you discovered music from the radio absolutely friends friends you know once you get older friends uh, if you had a cooler older uh siblings or uh see, i didn't have that cousins stuff I like just, that my parents were into cool shit so yeah see my cousins were like uh my cousins were like cool punk rockers yeah, i was coming home from elementary school i'd walk in the house and be typo negative or that's, Alice in Chains, see, or cool. my mom would be listening to the Go Go's, or yeah. the Ramones, or oh yeah, dude, you know something like that. She was really into a lot of country, so so yeah. there's something something like that going on. Um, a lot of uh, '60s like garage. She like her favorite band in the world was the Monkees. Oh, cool. So a lot of Monkees. She introduced me to the Doors very early on. That was how she'd put me to sleep. Was the B side of Soft Parade. On Interesting. Um, Wild Child and. Uh, wishful sinful and soft parade and that, mm-hmm. that whole record, and, like that whole B side of that record is just incredible. It's like one of my favorite records of all time. Still go to sleep with it? Oh, I, I would. Yeah, I've still got that copy of it. It's just so butchered. Yeah, I mean, because it, it was an every night thing for years. It was like that's what it was either that or uh, Cream. That, Interesting. Yeah. That's cool. A little more up tempo. Yeah, definitely. Damn. 
So who's this next band? This is Low Faith, and uh, I think Low Faith is from all over Colorado, kind of. They're not really like a, they don't have one home. I think some of them are from Wyoming, I think, too. But they're kind of a side project of a bunch of different other, like, kind of a bunch of hardcore bands and stuff like that. Uh, but they don't sound anything like a hardcore band, which is amazing to me. I love that shit. <laughs>
All right, welcome back. That was Adult Books from California with their song Casual Rex from the album Running With The Blows. They've got $5 cassettes on their band camp. Uh, there's only a few left, so definitely go pick that one up. Before that, we had uh, one of John's picks, Low Faith, with their song Consume Me. I, I really dug that band. Dude, dude, those are my favorite sad boys. They're so good. Yeah, I want to check that out. Um, do you know if they have... Did, you know if they're got anything coming up that you I'm know not of? too sure. They have... Uh, that self-titled EP and then some demo outtakes. Yeah. Uh, but beyond that, I'm not too sure. They play here and there. I think they're just kind of, kind of getting it together. Kind of get to them do down more. to the rainbow. Yeah. Oh yeah. I would That'd love, be cool. I would love that, man. That'd be awesome. So, um, once again, I know I've said it probably three times this episode, but definitely look in the description for the link, the donation link for uh, the guys in Hoffman down in Mexico City. I just think that's really important. At least the money's going straight to them, you know, so you kind of know where it's going. Um, other than that, we've got two more bands. Thanks a lot for coming on, man. Like, this was cool. Yeah, are you kidding me? I'm, I'm having a blast. Like, this was, this was a lot of fun. Like, I, I, we could probably <laughs> do this all day and just, just bullshit about music, but, uh, you know, busy people. Absolutely. Busy people. So right on. So this next band, awesome Denver band try to pick it up a little bit get a little more aggressive on this and this one is uh all out helter with ruins and then we're going to close out the show with another song by the heart attack kids uh those guys that whole record is incredible the uh, no future record we played deaf dogs earlier and then uh and i'm not sure what we're going to play next we're just going to wing it on this one but they've got a show coming up october 6th in uh london ontario at rum runners it's an all-ages show so if you're listening in that area potentially uh, definitely go check those guys out. Hopefully they come somewhere near Colorado so we can see them as well. But uh, thanks a lot, John, for coming on, and uh, we will see you later. Hell thanks yeah, for dude. tuning in, everybody. Yeah, have a good one. Crawl out of holes and climb out of basements and take your first steps out into the wastelands.